The following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Welcome to Aftergate, powered by the Defy Life Network. Aftergate is a podcast series highlighting Colgate alumni of color in their professional endeavors, Aftergate. Aftergate is hosted by Alvin Glimpf, a.k.a. Al, and Herman Dubois, a.k.a. Jerry. We are doing Aftergate because Colgate University has produced innovators who have changed the world every day, yet many alumni of color and the mainstream Colgate community are unaware of the amazing accomplishments of alums of color. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to another edition of Aftergate. It is awesome to be here and uh, more words than uh, I will share right now, but I will get into it. Um, <laughs> but it has been an awesome run so far. Looking forward to this conversation as always. Remember, Aftergate is an opportunity for us to talk with some of the best alum that Colgate has ever produced. So looking forward to that. But first, let me introduce my co-host, my hermano of <laughs> ooh, over 25, 30 years. It is, it is. It it's is a 30, Dubois. 30 years and counting, 30 years and counting. What's up, brother? Yes, Glenn, uh, just again, another beautiful opportunity to, to engage in some uh, robust and impactful dialogue yes. uh, with some of our brothers and sisters who some we know, some we don't, but uh, I get just as excited as if it's my first episode every time we get a chance to speak to one of the legends. So I'm excited about uh, the, the the next guest. Yes, true indeed, true indeed. But how are you doing? How are you doing? I know you know you 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 count you count on some blessings and you know let you know that prayers was out for you and the misses. And so, man, I appreciate that. It has been an interesting week. Um, as you know, we were in a car accident on Wednesday, and actually, um, I'm here with only but some soreness in my chest from the airbag deploying. Mm -hmm. And so when you see the picture of the car, you would imagine we would be in a much worse situation right now. So me and Gina are doing fine. Worst part of it all is we got to look for another car. So when you have to say that as the worst part of it all, that's pretty good, right? Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. Just glad to be here because it could have been a whole nother situation that's today. It, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's so, it. Um, so thank you for asking and uh, appreciate the prayers. But I, I do feel there are uh, some angels, ancestors have been watching my path and allowing mm-hmm. me to continue doing some good deeds. So mm-hmm. with that being said, let's continue with the good deeds. Yes, sir. And introduce our guests of this evening. The myth, the man, the legend. Let's welcome to Aftergate officially, Mr. Garfield Smith. How you doing, my brother? Very well, very well. How are you too? Uh, I awesome. forward to this conversation. And um, as always, trying to remember, where do I know Garfield from? How long do I know Garfield? And I feel like, I don't know if I've ever been in your presence, if I've met you personally, like been in your personal presence, I feel like it's all been either email or virtual. Um, it, it, it has been email or, or virtual. So yes. at least, is there, at is least there a chance, is there a chance that you guys were at the university at the same time for some event and just didn't know and didn't know to seek each other out? Mm, Cause you, you both have been back for certain things, no? Have you ever gone back for a reunion? I was last time I was back was the bicentennial. See, we were the opposite. We were there. We were there. Then, okay. 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 So we've been in each other's presence. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. 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 Uh, well, it's uh, been you know a good opportunity to interact with you, particularly virtually. Um, you are heavily involved in AOC and showing uh, leadership as we guided um, this organization. So I appreciate all of what you've done over the years, getting a chance to interact with you and what you've done on that regards, because it takes a village to get AOC continuing to move. So thank you for all that you've done. I I appreciate that. And first, let me say that uh, two things. One, hearing about your accident, I'm 
happy and pleased and thank God that uh, you are, yeah. you're back, your, your wife, both of you are, are safe. So blessings, blessings there. Thank you. Um, and secondly, a major high five, thumbs up and uh, all, the, all the other accolades to you, Al, you, Jerry, because you don't know what you have until you realize that until you get it and you guys have provided this forum and i just stopped and i thought wait a second we didn't have this wait a second it is so good that it takes me to a place where i'm just wondering how come we didn't have it and each episode just gets better and better and better and this says nothing about the first episode it just gets richer and I so appreciate every single guest that you've had and the, the breadth and depth and wealth of information and people uh, that you have enabled all of us to listen to is fantastic. So hats off to you, your interns and everyone else involved. It is greatly appreciated after Gate. Many, many thanks. <laughs> Well, it has already been an amazing walk as we've done this. Um, last week when I was in North Carolina, due to us having a conversation with Clarence Brown and interviewing him, I was then able to hook up with a group of alumni that he was meeting up with in Raleigh, people from his class. So I got to meet another six or seven other Colgate alums, many of which I might have never crossed paths with because they had chosen not to engage with Colgate besides their little circle, like so many of us. And so it was good to meet them. It was good to hear their stories. Um, I hope have uh, through Clarence kind of now got a bigger inroads into them in terms of what me and Jerry are doing in terms of listening to Aftergate as well as some of them becoming guests. So uh, this is already uh, producing some amazing uh, benefits and we're trying to even take it to another level and hopefully this will be the beginning of more engagement of us in between uh with us with alumni of color so awesome awesome Great. awesome so let's let's jump on in and get a sense of what life was like for you so you're a class of 1985 the great class of 1985. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're the class of the great class of 1985. <laughs> so you're coming into Colgate 1981. Yeah, a very yeah. interesting time in our country. I'm curious to hear from you. Give us some context of what life was like for you personally. What's life like in the country? On yeah. give give us a sense of that. Sure. Let, let me let me take a step back because it is uh, all important in terms of me attending Colgate, um, getting there. Um, and so I was actually I was originally born in Jamaica, and our family migrated to the U.S. when uh, when I was six. And so I'm the youngest of uh, four kids, and moved to. Bloomfield, Connecticut, so a suburb of wow. Hartford, and as many of us knew then, and those on the Northeast, that basically after New York, Hartford was uh, a little West Indies, uh, and it was the second largest population of West Indian immigrants uh, outside of uh, New York, uh, and so I basically came to uh, an area that was filled with, uh, with West Indians, although Bloomfield, uh, the suburb was not as uh, diverse as, uh, as Hartford was. So that is sort of the background that, that, that I'm, coming, I'm coming with. Um, I found out about Colgate um, essentially from biology professor that taught at Bloomfield High. And I had an individual who went to Colgate uh, the year before me. Uh, so I had become acquainted with Colgate. I met uh, an admissions representative at a college fair. And frankly, I was very impressed. I was very impressed with what he said, how he said it. Uh, and I said, this, this, uh, I, I want to take a look at this. But from a macro perspective, uh, in 80, 81, we were going through a massive recession uh, at that time. 
And so prior to this large recession that we went through, it was then the largest recession prior to the, the Great Recession that we had. So there were definitely issues in terms of economic challenges in the air, uh, as well as the fact that we were coming off a time that, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, this was, we still had hostages who were in Iran. Mm -hmm. So you had the global issue, which led to a uh, new presidency. Uh, Reagan uh, assumed office then in, uh, in 81. So you had all of these macro issues uh, taking, taking place. Um, I say that based on the fact that I remember going to, to Colgate um, subfrosh weekend. And um, I remember calling home and saying, talking to my mother and father on the phone and said, if this is possible, if this is possible, this is where I'd like to go. Wow. Because I know that it, it wasn't a slam dunk, okay, you're interested in it, uh, you're going. It was, let's see where the household finance is, what they look like, let's mm -hmm. see what the package looked like, and let's see if we can be able to, to pull this off. You are the last child, uh, so therefore, uh, we need to give thought to, to what's left. So uh, that, that was the, the background that, uh, that I uh, entered Colgate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the what give us a sense of the high school your high school that you're coming from what's the transition like from your high school to Colgate the the transition was actually pretty easy um the a high school was we had one high school in our town Bloomfield had 20,000 people in the town so it was nothing I mean yeah. and it was just a, it was a small town uh, and the demographics were probably 85% white in okay. my, in my high school. And the classes that I had, you know, they were, um, they started to track students similar to a lot of high schools at that, at that time. And so unfortunately, in a lot of the classes that I had, there were probably three or four of us mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. um, and we all, you know, we all knew each other. Number one, my graduating class was 292 people. <laughs> okay, so you could turn around and you knew everybody by first name. There was four elementary schools in the town, one junior high, one middle school. One, you, you know, you knew everybody by that time. Uh, so transitioning to Colgate was not a, a big challenge for me in terms of the demographics. Obviously, it was skewed a little even, even more. Um, but nevertheless, um, I had a, um, an understanding of what it meant like to be one or two in a, in a classroom. Mm -hmm. Wow. So then when you get to Colgate, what's that life like then? Um, where are you staying? Did you stay in HRC? Yeah. Okay. So um, when I came, so I came through um, and had the summer of OUS. Yep. So I did OUS that summer. Okay. Uh, and, you know, at that time, it's, it's the summer, uh, obviously, we have classes, but, uh, you know, we're on the college campus. And at that time, um, Colgate was still doing summer classes for, um, for students. So we were on the class, we were on campus with, um, you know, there were most of the juniors or a large percentage of the juniors were on campus. So I didn't know they ever I didn't know yeah. that it even existed that that yes. students took I remember a January class. I remember those sessions. I don't yeah. which they eventually faded out, but I, I yeah. don't remember ever even hearing so, about students so having to take that. summer classes. Yeah. So there were individuals on campus. Um, and so we everybody bonded you know, within OUS and then outside of OUS, there was there was good bonding going on. Um, and I actually, when I started, I stayed in Andrews, and one of my good friends who remains one of my closest friends to now, Irving Chung from the Bronx, mm -hmm. um, uh, he and I, yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> the Bronx <laughs> in the house, um, we lived across the hall from each other uh, when, we, when we started uh, in Andrews, so not only am I great class of uh, 1985, also the number one dorm, which is Andrews, which continues <laughs> to this day. It's not that I'm, uh, and, and that's an objective statement, by the way, I should make sure I say that. Um, so, but, you know, there were issues. I remember when we started, I, 
had three through three roommates, you know, how Andrews is situated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember everybody moving in and all of our parents were there. And I remember one of my roommates said to me, and all three were from Long Island and, um, you know, everybody's going through their own transition, right? And he said, hey, Garfield, would you mind moving your box from this area? And I'm like, and I, I was, I was just, I had a, a level of sarcasm at that point to just like tweak you, okay? And so uh, I said, do you actually mean my radio, the I said, do you actually mean the radio cassette player? You know, just to like, <laughs> just like, like I'm not sure what you're referring to. Box, what, is, what, is, what is that? If you could expound upon that. And I said, uh, that actually is not mine. I believe that belongs to the roommate who was on your side. Hmm. And so it like totally like threw him back. He's like, okay. And I just wanted to like, let him know, okay, if you're coming at this, starting on day one from that perspective where you're trying to put me in a box mm -hmm. literally and say something with regard to who I am as a black individual, this is not going to happen. And let me just start from day one to let you know that this is not going to happen. Right. You know? Well, we, we got along fine after that. And I think it was just the understanding of we don't have to be friends, but there is going to be respect that we are going to have toward each other regardless of what your background is and what the, my background is from jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to claim your space, man. Or people yeah. will, you know, push yeah. you, push you around. So what, um, any activities, any organizations were you involved in while yeah, you were there? It's, it's, it's interesting because when I, in high school, all I did was play soccer. I played soccer during soccer season club soccer. I took three city buses to be on a team. Uh, and so I had gotten an invitation um, to, to try out. My coach had provided some information with the soccer coach. And when I got to Colgate and I, I went and I tried out, uh, I remember going to the gym where the list was posted and my name was not on the list. <laughs> it was not on the list. Wow. So I had gotten, I didn't make the team. So here I was thinking that this was what I had done in high school. This is what I was going to do. What was I going to do now? So literally, I remember going back to the dorm room and like hanging up my, my soccer cleats. And at the same time, my, one of my other roommates was trying out for the baseball team and he didn't make it either. So we, both of us we're like experiencing this like complete, okay, we're shell shocked. And I come from a family, my dad was very actively involved in West Indian community. And so engagement is almost like, a, it, 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 it flows like, like water. So I said, what can I do? And I actually, I ran for freshman class council. And I think that was what like triggered all the other things that happened in my time at, uh, at Colgate. Um, in addition to freshman class council, I was on student affairs council. Mm -hmm. I was on the minority affairs council. I was in judicial board. I was black student mm -hmm. union. I did all of those things. Um, I think it blew my mind that Colgate allowed students to have so much say Mm -hmm. in so many varying aspects of the school. And so I said, hey, if they allow this, then let me jump in and promote the change that I want to see on this campus. So that it, but if it wasn't for, you know, not making the soccer team, I'm not sure what would have happened, but that, that definitely provided an impetus for me to do some other things that ended up I think really making a significant change in terms of how I saw Colgate, my involvement in Colgate, um, and all the different things that I did probably since that time. Um, it was um, a, a key aspect of what drove me. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Do you feel as you reflect on those sort of experiences, whether in the classroom, outside the classroom, um, categorize them as milestones and accomplishments like are there anything that you personally would be like 
you know, when you reminisce about the Colgate days, you know, you're, there's a certain attachment, nostalgia you have because of those accomplishments? I, I 100%, 100%. Um, because it, it allowed me, it allowed me to see under the hood in terms of uh, the school to the, to the extent that, you know, you, you can, it's still, I'm, I'm a student, I'm going to classes, I'm trying to like, you know, graduate, I'm thinking about grad school, I'm thinking about all those things. So it wasn't my day to day, but it was definitely played a major role. Um, in terms of accomplishments, I think it, it played a key role in terms of, I was fortunate enough to be the recipient of a few different awards in terms of the, the Steinmetz Award for uh, a freshman and George Cobb Fellows and the President's Award. And I felt that diving into school and trying to push for change in areas that I felt was necessary for change to occur and seeing change, just like it wet my appetite to push for more. Like every time, you know, as students together and it was never like a solo effort, but it was as students together, we saw change. It just meant more change could occur. So I definitely look back and say, yeah, it was something that I looked on uh, fondly and it enabled me to gain some insight as well as develop some relationships with individuals uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the administration that I definitely would not have had. Um, perfect example is um, I was doing a lot of work and the dean of the college at the time was actually uh, Dean Moynihan. Um, I, he knew that I was from the Bloomfield area and there was a board of trustee member that was from that area. And he said, you should meet with her. I'm like, the board of trustees, I'm a student, help me understand. What do they and, want uh, with me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, um, but I met with her uh, and she was one of the first women to graduate from Colgate, wow. had a Colgate family. And she just happened to um, be a vice president uh, in human resources uh, at, uh, at a company that uh, she said, you should take a look at this company in terms of uh, an internship. And she basically shepherded me through the process. And the summer after my sophomore year, I had an internship in the investment group of uh, Cigna Financial Services. So hands down, that would not have happened unless um, interest had been expressed from me to the dean the dean then connected me to uh, a board member. The board member said, I want to help a Colgate grad or a Colgate student. So A led to B led to C. Mm -hmm. Those Colgate connections. The Colgate mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It, uh, it was, was very, very positive. It has been very positive to me. Mm -hmm. Be beautiful thing. Um, is there anything you miss when you look back at that time? Um, you know, I'd say there's, there's two things. One is um, I had a chance. It, it also whet my appetite in terms of travel. Uh, and I did a study group. I actually did a study group to Zambia and Zimbabwe. Wow. And it was the first time that the school had ventured to um, Southern Africa. Um, because a lot of the study groups, you know, were European based um, or, you know, other other areas. But this allowed us from a, an ethnic perspective, from a political perspective, I was a poli sci major. And so to be able to go to a country that was uh, experiencing all that was going on in Southern Africa, I, we stayed at the um, UNSA, it's called the University of uh, Zambia. And where we stayed was also where um, the uh, SWAPO, Southwestern Alliance for People's Organization, Namibia, had stayed, and also where ANC individuals were staying. And both groups were fighting the fight um, <laughs> in their respective countries. Wow. So, and I was being taught by Marxist professors. So, <laughs> Indian, I mean, I was just like, I was in heaven. I had an opportunity to like meet with these guys who were, you know, resistance fighters. And I'm being taught by Marxist professors. The hell with a textbook. Just, oh, uh, you know, exactly. This was all like right at my doorstep. 
-hmm. So I felt that I, I missed that ability to have all these things right at your doorstep. Mm -hmm. You know, you're stepping out and you're going to concerts, steps away. You're not thinking about, okay, am I a subscriber for that play or for this, or I got to go buy tickets for this, or your buddies were across the hall or in the next dorm. So, you know, now we're like, okay, let's drive and get together. Oh, that's not a good weekend for me. Oh, my kids are doing this. Catch a flight. So, right. Yeah, exactly. All of that stuff. You're like, they're right there. You know, right. you can go do whatever, and you're five minutes away from, like, your, your best pal. So those, those things that enrichment, both in terms of academics as well as friends, uh, it's, it's tough to miss. It's, it, yeah. it's, you know, tough to recreate, I should say. But. definitely understand that um yeah. we're going to take a pause right here and uh, run a commercial for our sponsor and then we'll come right back up and uh, jump into part two of our conversation with mr garfield so this episode is sponsored by hope murals hope murals is a nonprofit that provides adolescent youth with an interactive experience of creative expression via an urban arts platform that stimulates both mental and physical development Please visit their website at www.homeheroes.org to learn more and find ways you can support the work they do. Welcome back. Welcome back. And before we get into the second round, I would definitely love to thank our sponsor, Hope Murals. Um, we are always appreciative of your sponsorship. Appreciate it. Uh, we definitely appreciate your efforts and what you're doing with adolescent youth with the Urban Arts Platform. Check them out and give them some love. Uh, if you want to be a sponsor, please email us at aftergatepodcast at gmail.com. Also want to show some love to our network. We'll check them out in the podcast hub where you can find all other dope shows, www.defilifepods with an S.com. If you're into the written content, check it out at Go defylife.com Brandon Apparel is at defylifegear.com and remember if you are not defying life what is your life about <laughs> so Jerry I'm going to pass it to you so you can uh, bring us into the second part of this conversation Brother Garfield um, it is Indeed. clearly a uh, interesting time in our society so many topics to discuss but I'm particularly interested on uh, this so you know I guess the recent uh, labeling of diversity equity and inclusion and how it's becoming this sort of you know uh, it's, the, it's the 2021 version of multicultural education or curriculum mm -hmm. of inclusion mm -hmm. or various decades had their terms would really love your take on um, the subject matter in particular not only in society but where how do you think Colgate plays out in terms of their movement and what would be some of the steps uh, you would encourage Colgate to adopt in order to bring us closer and move the needle in those areas? Sure, sure. And um, one, um, I think we all have seen issues and challenges uh, in our, you know, respective times at, uh, at Colgate. And it, what it does is it reinforces the fact that change not should be made, but has to be made. It's not, it, it, it's not a should, it, it has to be made. How we, we make that change is the, I think the topic of, of discussion. And I think many alumni of, of color uh, support Colgate's DEI plan, which uh, the university put out uh, a few years ago, which is part of the third century um, initiatives that, the, that they're working on. But I think I, we also believe um, that this is a unique time that requires Colgate to take additional steps to what uh, I heard uh, and what President Casey uh, had noted, dismantle racism and systemic uh, inequality. Um, as, as such, um, I, and part of a group of individuals um, called the Partnership for Racial Progress, um, PRP. And the organization was, was founded um, actually June of 2020. And it was, you know, after our nation went through just a horrific 
time period, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, unfortunately, as you know, the, the list goes on. Um, and what happened is, um, I'm, I'm thankful that based on prior sessions that you had, um, Darian uh, McFadden, Carla Beckford, um, as well as Nicole um, Turner and Rodney Mason, 06, all of these incredible Colgate grads uh, spoke at, um, at, at an event that was called Creating Space Around um, Protest, Pandemic, Peace and Progress in America. I think that that was a really important time for us to get together to talk about these issues of systemic inequality and racism that was um, we were all experiencing. Um, what happened next was that a number of us got together and said, well, now that's the macro issue in terms of the country. Now let's think about Colgate. Let's think about the micro uh, element that's dealing with that. And so um, based on that, there are nine individuals, including myself, that got together. Um, Leroy Cody, as you know, uh, 71, Diane Ciccone, Leroy Potts, Christine Rivera, Siobhan Martin, uh, Kelechi Ogu, uh, Mian Dinman, and Carlton Walker. Um, set out to take a look in terms of what additional things do we feel need to be done that need to be added to the DEI efforts that the school was, was doing. And so uh, we came up with, together with another group of individuals, some 40 plus uh, individuals. So in total, the PRP or Partnership for Racial Progress, numbers, you know, almost 50 plus people. Uh, and we had a four-pronged framework, uh, faculty and staff, curriculum, um, students, alumni, and culture, and then operations. And what we did is we provided to the university issues within each of those pillars and specific solutions um, or recommendations and initiatives to address the concerns that we were noting. Detailed items. And I should add, if anybody's listening to this, if you want further information, please email prp at colgate.edu, prp at colgate.edu, and we'll send you the information that we have shared with, with the university. Since our inception uh, last July, we've met with the university, and, um, the core team and the broader PRP members um, at least eight different times uh, to share and promote change. So in terms of what do I think, what are we doing? We are trying to be active in terms of being a perspective uh, from the alumni of color to make change on the campus to share detailed information and insights on what we believe because as we have seen from the podcast, we have an incredible group of individuals that cut across a broad, broad, broad swath of life and experiences. Um, and so we've all brought that to bear to say, you've done X, but we feel W, Y, and Z need to be done. And so we've met with President Casey, Laura Jack, um, Hannah Rodriguez Ferrar, Christopher Wells, Dean Hawks, uh, Ronnie McFall, all of these individuals, and they have been open. They've been open and they've been responsive. We appreciate the fact that you could imagine we've met with the senior team over eight times, uh, and we've seen changes uh, occurring. Uh, you know, some of the changes include uh, if you were to go on campus and you were to go, if there was a faculty uh, room, okay, per se, additional faculty members of color, training and um, surveying of students, student recruitment, operations related efforts. And I'm not giving all this credit just to PRP, but the university was on a road and had been progressing down that road. What PRP is trying to do is stimulate and continue to push that the car can't stop here. We need to keep going and we need to continue to add items. So therefore we don't have to go through the same issues and challenges that others went through to have our future students go through. It is. 
it's, it's awesome that we have a distinct alumni organization that's doing that type of work. Mm -hmm. And that oftentimes it has fell into the purview of the alumni of color, the AOC. But I think it's even wiser to have a distinct group mm -hmm. that's focused on that to push Colgate. They're going to be doing it either way, we hope, but yeah. to accelerate that progress, to accelerate exactly that change. It. So I heard uh, Dana uh, Campbell, um, 17, uh, say it, and she said it best. I'm giving her full credit for this. She said, the goal is to make Colgate equal parts yours. So I give that thought. Like, Every single time we engage with something, uh, I feel that each of us are part of the mosaic that Colgate has. And no point, no part of that tile is more important than the other, but together we create this, this picture. So we all need to be there, but we have to make sure that we make it equal parts ours to get the most out of everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember when I was on campus, us saying, this place isn't ours, this place wasn't built for us, mm -hmm. and us having that mentality of let's just get here, get out, and not look back, because this place wasn't built for us, but the reality is, I think this place is ours, and it's... Well, it's about owning it and claiming it, and I think that um, because there's such a tumultuous shock in many cases that occurs for a lot of the students of color, it takes you that first one or two years to just figure out that, okay, I belong here, you know, and I'm going to survive this. And then the rest is survival mode. And I think that what happens often is that very few students, I think, get to a point where they do feel that sense of, no, I, be I belong here and I'm going to own a part of this experience. Mm -hmm. And then you start thinking, wow, if I had had this mindset my freshman year versus my junior, senior year, you know, things like travel, studying abroad, things like involvement in student government, things like, you know, besides the social element, but getting involved from a student voice perspective to have an impact and change. Um, I think that uh, it goes, I think it, that's something that should be part of orientation in summer OUS, um, you know, in, a, in an intentional way that I think helps students understand how much it will shape their experience. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I fully agree. I, I think uh, reading the book, uh, Into the Light, uh, Diane's book, mm -hmm. uh, should be a standard. Mandatory, mandatory reading for exactly. all for, for all students. I, I mean, um, I had the wonderful opportunity of speaking with um, a gentleman by the name of, um, can't recall his first name, Crosby, who was a, a classmate of Colin Powell Jr., and wow. you, you can uh, just think about, and he actually was a resident of Hartford. So I had a chance to like sit down and engage with him about what Colgate was like. They graduated in 1930. So like wrap your mind <laughs> around that, wow. okay? Mm -hmm. um, and he was just talking about issues and challenges that they had to go through. So I think having that perspective that perspective on what happened in the past and just trying to say, okay, I don't want that to happen for the next. Then it's like, okay, if not you, then who? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True indeed. Per perfect segue. Go ahead, Al. So what I would like to have you do as this brand developing expert, love for you to share that journey from graduation sure, to sure. now. I'll, I try to try to keep it simple. And uh, as, as I said, um, having Colgate on the resume is one thing, but engaging in the Colgate network is another. Uh, and I think it takes the combination of both of those to help, help you if you desire in terms of moving forward, to, the, the combination of both. So um, having the internships, you know, I had two strong internships coming out of Colgate, working in the investment group. I was thinking law school uh, from, you know, probably when I was like six or seven. I got to Colgate. I was still thinking law school. And one of the, intern the, the internships changed my mind. I said, you know what? I think I really want to go to business school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my, my dad was like, what? <laughs> you know? And his view was, you do school, you do it all the way through, you get your degree, 
and you go, you go start work. And I was like, oh no. And this was really at the time that a lot of the business schools were taking a step back and they were saying, you're not gonna be able to go straight. We want you to have some work experience. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Cigna, worked there for three years. And from the start, I said, I'm going to business school and I'm going in three years. I just hope that admissions committee agrees with me in terms of when, <laughs> in terms of accepting me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got into uh, to Northwestern's business school, Kellogg. Uh, I had probably six or seven other Colgate people that were in my uh, class uh, mm -hmm. at Kellogg. I had a marketing bug. Uh, I ended up taking a position at uh, General Mills doing general management, um, brand management there for a few years. Um, met my wife uh, there. Um, we moved to, uh, to Los Angeles. Uh, wanted to be close to a set of uh, families. Mine was on the East Coast. Hers was on the West Coast. She won. <laughs> and They, they usually uh, do. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, started working there in telecommunications and had the telecommunications technology bug. And I stayed, I stayed in, in that bug. I've been involved in technology since then and marketing and branding in the field of uh, technology. But um, the undergraduate degree from Colgate helped, the MBA from Colgate helped, networking was the, the next part. Um, and having, you know, strength in terms of being able to talk to individuals, because one of the, one of the biggest challenges that I found is for, for folks, individuals of color mm -hmm. to be able to move up the corporate ranks, if that's their desire to connect mm -hmm. with other individuals, because it's one thing to be able to get a mentor. It's another thing to be able to have a mentor of color um, because it, there, it's tough to be able to have someone who is not experiencing that piece of the puzzle um, talk to you and share insights with you uh, fully. I remember I was on a, I was on a, a, a leadership trip in the, the company, you know, 12, 13,000 people. And we had 300, the top 300 managers in the company. And we had an offsite, it was somewhere in Europe. And I looked around, there were like five or six of us globally, globally. And I'm thinking, I am not the smartest person in the world. So I can't imagine why there are just five or six people of color globally this, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong. So at every juncture, I was always trying to see what I could do. And that's why a lot of, I remember you said passion projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of my passion projects are working with young individuals and being part of groups that really stimulate and foster individuals from high school, but it can go even younger in terms of helping them to see the opportunities that exist because a lot of times they just don't mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ability to see is the ability to then make that next step in terms of actualizing what you saw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, with that insight, um, if you reflect back to you know a younger self uh, going back to freshman year entering Colgate, as well as graduating from Colgate, entering the world, what, what advice would you give to yourself knowing all that you know now? <laughs> uh, I say to my 18 year old self, um, you know, what? I'd really say um, dive in. Uh, and I'd say dive in academically and dive in from a organization perspective uh, as well. And I felt that I had doors open to me uh, or I tried to open because I started to um, engage in terms of trying to make change. And so I saw the fruits uh, of that 
and I believe the places that I went saw the fruits of that because I had something that I could be able to, to talk about. And you don't necessarily have to be the president of X or the vice president of Y to do it. But the fact that you were part of something and you were trying to make a change or you're trying to do something different enables you to add color commentating to wherever you're going um, and it enables you to add. So that's, and then academically, um, I think that that always helps. Um, I know I took some classes that really challenged me. I remember, you know, taking a philosophy class and, you know, I think it was uh, Professor Terrell at the time and I got a grade that I didn't like. And I remember going to the class, going to talk to him and he's like, so what did you learn? And, you know, I shared with him the details of what I learned. In my mind, I was thinking, okay, the grade change is coming. It's coming because I, I spouted out all these different things. He said, that's good. So you have moved ahead. And it was kind of like, but he said, you weren't able to articulate that on the paper, but it is, it's great that you had that learning. So sometimes the learning doesn't come in terms of the form of the grade, but it does in fact uh, come. So academically learn um, and work hard on that and then engage because I think that when I look at things and the companies I've been part of and what I've tried to do, I kind of walk into a room thinking change. Mm -hmm. And I feel that Colgate has really stimulated that in me in terms of thinking through and trying to understand um, not only what should change, but how do you make that change uh, occur? So that's what I would tell my 18 year old self. And I think the graduate side, um, I think that there's a, there's a time period of your life where it's a lot easier to work really, really hard. Like those first five to seven to 10 years you get out of college, it's quote unquote easier. It's never easy, easier to just work really hard to catapult your career or your mm. graduate school, whatever you're thinking about doing to that next level. Because after that, it just becomes harder. You, you know, you're married, you have kids, you're doing different things. It just becomes harder. So if you can get yourself in a position um, that enables you to um, grow, and become enhanced in your chosen field in those early years when you have that dynamo uh, in you, that energy in you, do it, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. That is awesome yes. advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and not enough graduates hear that, mm -hmm. that perspective. Um, now is the time we ask a Colgate question that you had no idea was coming. Okay. All right. So curious, you know, part of being on uh, at Colgate is you have these social experiences that, you know, might be on Colgate's campus, might not be on Colgate's campus, but they tend to leave a lasting memory in your mind. So I'm mm -hmm. curious as you reflect, is there a Colgate highlighted social experience that when you just think about something that happened that you just will not forget you, you had to be there <laughs> <laughs> I, I think if you had anyone in our years who didn't answer this it's probably going to be an issue but a, a week funk party was always the party to make sure that your work was done and for you know i i don't even know if we funk is still on on campus right now but that was the essentially um, uh, the, the party that you had lively, it was, uh, thrown by, uh, folks. Uh, and so you had, you know, all the latest music, uh, all the latest rap, all the latest, everything that you were able to, to have. Those were the parties where you left sweaty, you, you know, quote unquote, let your hair down. Uh, and that was the party that you didn't miss. If you missed something, that wasn't it. So that 
that that was the the social aspect that uh, I, was I there one say. party was there one party in particular that may have <laughs> had a particular <laughs> lasting episode I mean you know I don't I'm gonna, I don't want you to throw anyone under the bus I just want you to feel comfortable <laughs> sharing that let me remind you we're in the kitchen at this point okay, and just still yeah, having yeah, that, yeah. that kitchen chat yeah. I'm, I'm gonna leave it at all the parties were great uh, <laughs> <laughs> well done well done well played I'm gonna well leave played. it leave it leave it at that let's say Social engagement, I did say you have to make sure that you involve yourself. So yes. make sure you involve yourself. He got involved. In those, he was very... In those, in those <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Shout, shout out to all of those people who uh, led We Funk, whether to through a end. DJ or, or just kind of was the uh, chief administrator of We Funk because to your point, Garfield, that was the highlight of many a Friday or Saturday night yeah for many of the students of color. I don't think they're still in existence, we funk, but mm -hmm. however long they lasted, they brought some real good energy to that campus. You so. should definitely have like Kirk and Daniel and, uh, and Eric and those guys that actually started we funk uh, on. That, that would be a good- so Was it started good, during your time? It was started, uh, to the best of my knowledge, yeah. It was yeah. started okay. during that, uh, okay. that 81 to 85 uh, time. Let, let me let me also say this in terms of the um, some of the other podcasts that uh, that I've heard. Um, so many people are re-engaging, and it's great to hear because um, we need each other. Like we need each other to make Colgate the what we want it to be. Yeah, and we are missing a piece of the puzzle if each of us are not involved. And you, you know, it's, you have that puzzle that has a thousand pieces and you're missing a couple and it's just not complete. And so what you are doing here, mm. um, I think helps in terms of the engagement because people are trying to say, okay, I'm a part of that puzzle. And I want in, um, and we we need those voices. We need those perspectives. The individuals who are involved right now don't have all the perspectives, and Correct. we need others. So please, uh, I'll repeat: if you're interested in the in things that the PRP is doing, please PRP at Colgate.edu. Get involved in in AOC. Uh, I think Chev is probably going to be on the show soon. I'm sure. I'm mm -hmm, sure of mm -hmm. that. Um, and so many, many plugs for all the people who have done tremendous amount of work to get us this far. And for those of you who haven't yet put your puzzle piece in, please, please, we need your puzzle piece. <laughs> we definitely need it. Um, here's an opportunity to promote and share a message, initiative an organization, something you would like to get out there in front of fellow AOC folk that maybe they can engage with you or support you, anything you'd like to promote at this time? Uh, I, I would say on the side of engagement, if you have not received an email from Colgate, the possibility is that Colgate doesn't have your email. So make an effort to call the alumni office and say, this is my email because so much information from the university. Recently, the university sent out a, um, an update on the, the DEI plan. Once a year, the university through uh, the work that it was doing said that they're going to evaluate where they stand with regard to uh, the DEI uh, initiative. The PRP, we closely look at that, but um, if you haven't received that email, if you haven't received an email from AOC, if you haven't received an email from PRP, we don't have your email. And so please just call the alumni office and say, I am X, add me to the email list um, to start getting information. So therefore we can, the university can share information with you and we can get everyone to add their puzzle piece 
to this remarkable mosaic. There it is. is. Now I have a question outside of your Colgate involvement. Do you do any consultation or independent freelance work in your world of of brand marketing? And and is there a way folks could reach you if they were interested in your services? Uh, I do. Um, and so it's real easy. It's Garfield O. Smith at, uh, at gmail.com. Um, I have a business partner. We have a um, consulting organization, um, Principles Marketing, that we consult to a number of different uh, companies, um, both in the healthcare space, the technology space, and consumer products uh, space. Uh, but you can get a hold of me uh, there. Uh, so it's Garfield Smith at uh, gmail.com. And um, that's that's the way to, uh, to reach me. There it is. There it is. No shameless plugs here, baby. It's after okay. game. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this is what we do around here. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, man, I greatly appreciate this, Brother Garfield. This has been an amazing conversation. Uh, appreciate all the words and uh, respect, respect, respect. Thank you <laughs> respect. for what you accomplished, appreciate my brother, and, and continue to accomplish. And looking forward to continuing to engage with you over the next few years or so. So, thank you, my brother. Thank if, you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Jerry. And if uh, I will keep listening to you. Uh, I hope the next time that we'll see each other will be will be soon. But if if not in the next few months, the reunion, without okay. a doubt, the reunion. Yes, uh, I am going to get uh, the the hotel accommodation straight ASAP because I know that uh, there's not a lot of space in Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, all know that we've been there before, yeah. and uh, I'm gonna continue trying to promote that weekend so that it will be the uh, biggest, baddest, and blackest reunion <laughs> thus, yeah, thus far. Good. Let's get All it. Right. Uh, so and, and so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that uh, Jerry and Al, slices are on you. Hey, <laughs> I, I got a round of slices. Um, so on that note, let me wrap up this episode of After Gate. Thank you, Garfield. Thank you, listeners. Thank you this has been another episode of After Gate powered by the Defy Life Network where you can hear us on all of your favorite platforms from uh, Apple Pods to Spreaker to Spotify. Just make sure you check us out. So check out all the dope episodes to follow. All right. Good night. Peace, good night. family. Peace out. Have a good one, brother. You hear that? Listen closer. That, my friend, is the deafening sound of focus. It drowns out all the useless noise that can clutter the moment. Naysayers don't exist. Haters, smaters, the peanut gallery, who's that? When you're in your zone, all that noise and all that buzz is just elevator music. So, enjoy your journey, focus on your goal, and bask in the quiet roar that is progress. Because when it's your time to shoot that shot, spit that verse, or close that deal, the only voice that matters is yours. Defy life.